Hi, I'm Elizabeth O'Reilly, and I'm coming to you live from the Colbert Gallery in Rockland, in Maine. And uh, <clears throat> thank you for showing up. Uh, I know this is to be a studio tour, and I happen to be in Maine, so the Rockland Gallery, where I show my work, let me use the uh, gallery today to show some work that I did last summer during the lockdown. So uh, I'm primarily a landscape painter, which is why I'll be teaching a plein air, the plein air challenge through the Art New England program from Mass College of Art and Design. And that's in, the, in July. And it'll be on Zoom. But I'm going to talk to you about some of the work I did last summer. And I'll also um, you know, just talk to you what the course will be about. So I came to Maine last summer and spent three months with my friend in Cushing and we shared her big barn studio and there's a great garden and so I really focused on nature I think because of Covid it just felt good to be somewhere quiet and to be in nature all the time and, uh, and just looking at plants close up so I have behind me uh, some these are um, alliums that are kind of already gone to seed and I just love the big shape, the circular shape, it kind of reminds me of COVID and I, I like to work in a series so I have a, several of paintings based on the allium and then I have some clematis and zinnia and so on, whatever I would find in the garden that would catch my interest. So and in terms of the class uh, as I said, it's the plein air challenge and will be on Zoom, but it's trying to figure out how to compose, how to organize a landscape. And, and it's kind of what I do here with my own work. How do you arrange uh, shapes on the rectangle in a way that works? And so the first thing we really talk about is positive and negative. The positive being the allium and the negative shape being what's behind it. And, that relationship has to really work positive to negative. And so we'll talk about that in class, but, and also very much what makes the rectangle work is the elements of design and how to get movement and how to have variation in size and how, how to create space on this flat surface. So as I said here, I have these, these two that are based on the alliums and they're kind of quite intricate, all the, these spheres and um, you know I, I kind of did the light work first and then I came in from behind on the background. Then I found this beautiful clematis in the garden. It's um, like a hanging vine and I brought that into the studio and it actually lasted for weeks. I did five or six paintings of this particular uh, flower which was like a bell and um, I just became very intrigued like one flower at a time. And uh, the next one then, this yellow flower is a zinnia. And the zinnia is most, uh, speaks most to landscape of all of these because even though I painted the flower inside on my table in the studio, um, I set it in a landscape. So out the door of the, the barn studio, I could see landscape. And so it's like, how do you make the small flower, which is, is up close, how do, you, how do you make the space work so that the forest is behind? And, and just arranging shapes so that there's a lot more here, and this is quite simple, the sun-drenched grass, and the proportion of a large, simple shape behind, and then a more complex uh, forest back here, and just to still keep the flower as the star. So, uh, and again, I, I, I talk a lot about temperature, warm and cool, and, um, and the flower is very yellow. So again, I have like a different kind of yellow going on in the zinnia than in this yellow green of the grass. So they're all deliberate choices. And again, to keep it very simple. And, uh, and then of course, back here, what I work on is, is that complementary thing, the, you know, the, the yellow to the violet. So it's like a pair of complements and blue violet and red violet and as I said creating the space making that look like the forest back there. Then I have two uh, poppies. 
I never painted poppies before this summer. Actually, this was a big summer for me for painting flowers, which I, a lot of the time, my studio is in Brooklyn. I do a lot of paintings of uh, the Gowanus Canal near right outside my studio. But so it was nice to get away in the middle of COVID and just be totally in nature and really look at a simple flower, you know, for days at a time. The poppy was this beautiful, delicate, like crepe paper. Uh, and, 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 and it would just blow so easily. And so it, it, it was hard to kind of capture it. And also the nice thing about landscape is everything changes so quickly, particularly flowers, that there's no time to procrastinate. So the flowers are the stars, but then it's like, how do you make that landscape work? And different kinds of greens, blue greens, yellow greens, you know, lemonish greens, you know, you know, the different variations you can get in order to create space and also sit back. And then I have a Monarda, which I have painted before from time to time. It's kind of this wild, wild looking red. It's like a pom-pom. I call it Mon Monarda pom-pom. So it's, um, it, it's, it's just quite amazing the way it grows and all these shapes and then just the zigzag. How can, how can I simplify the background and still convey the uh, nature behind. And then I have one more to the right over here. I have another, another one of my alliums. This time the allium uh, is actually in the landscape. And so, so it's like always setting a, a problem, you know, how do you, how do you make the, um, how do you make it sit? How do you work out what goes on behind, which is often a, a more complicated problem than the object itself. The next two are, I became intrigued with this flower this summer. It's called a scabiosa. And as it would open, the petals were actually like little envelopes, like little parcels. And, and they were this kind of square shape. And they would very petal by petal open up. And then inside there was this tangle of beautiful little seeds. And I, I painted this for weeks. I actually did a lot of flashings of, of this gaviosa, and, you, know, turn it, you know, turned it different sides, painted it outside, painted it in the studio, and just really got to know the flower. There's a project which I recently set my students to do was, you know, take an object and paint it a hundred times, and what can you do with it? And I, that's kind of what I did with this. I, I don't have a hundred, but I kept going with it. So I have another uh, over here of this Escaviosa, and um, again, these are all small because they're all done on site, and I really try and engage the rectangle, so I often will take parts of it off so that I have these negative shapes behind and looking for variations in there, and just to convey that this is back there, this is the meadow, and then some of the, the, the grass below. But as I said, I got very interested in, it's kind of like a sunflower, but it's actually a very tiny flower. So you can tell I really was interested in back to nature. That was what COVID did for me this summer. And um, another thing I did this past summer was I was teaching a class, um, a watercolor class called exploratory watercolor class and my very last bunch of flowers before COVID hit, on March 12th, I had these flowers in my classroom in Manhattan in the, in the school. And uh, I took them with me out to Long Island and stayed there for six weeks with a friend. This was prior to the main trip. But uh, just to try and be more, I always want, I'm teaching this class, exploratory watercolor. How can I be more playful with my watercolors? So that was like a project I set myself. And a lot of splashing of reds and just maybe sometimes wetting the paper, sometimes literally just flicking the brush using going from a warm cadmium red to like a lizard crimson, bringing in some blues so that it's, so this, there's all this tangle. And then, and then out of that mess of red to try and find um, this, this make, the, make the flowers appear. So that was one, and here is another of the same flower. So again, as I worked on these, the more I worked on them, they just became looser. 
and uh, after that I also I want to show you this landscape it's actually not from COVID but I happen to have it here with me in the gallery but this was done by the Delaware Water Gap and uh, it's the it's it's on Route 80 out heading you know in New Jersey very close to the Pennsylvania border and again very much working with um, you know the elements of design where do you place the tree how much do you include how do you make these other trees go back and again warm to cool there it's very simple in terms of color orange to blue really which is a pair of compliments and with watercolor I really work a lot on um, on, on um, how to how, how to how to manage this foreground and uh, thinking about transparency and opacity. So after that, I started to work on a whole set of watercolors which are quite different for me, which was a good COVID lockdown challenge. So uh, trying to get away from just working on observation. And so what I did was on the rectangle, I would place a circular form. So in this case, I started with a green and Viridian is, can be very uh, um, transparent. And so then I moved to red. So if I have green here, my next inclination is to go to the complement and make a red circle inside. And then once I had that structure in, in place on the rectangle, then I started like, okay, what can I do now in the center? And again, splashing on some reds, some blues, trying to be playful, trying some dots and dashes. And then of course, um, you can see your marks where it just splashed so that then that, that would indicate what I could do next. Then again, the problem is what to do outside of the oval shape and how to make that work without competing with with the swirling shapes in here. And so a lot of it is just working very intuitively, looking at it, working an area, leaving it, and then coming back and looking at it again. And here's another one. Again, this is lighter, but again, it's based kind of, it really starts, it comes out from a, a violet uh, oval shape and then working some yellows inside. And when I got to this, part of these this series of paintings I was looking for inspiration and I looked a lot at megalithic tombs from Ireland I loved always to look at Newgrange there are these massive stones and it was a burial chamber and you know light goes inside just you know on the uh, the, the shortest day of the year but uh, and the stones are all carved with these shapes and so nobody knows what they mean, which makes it kind of intriguing for me. But then I, that's where I got the spiral shapes and these shapes here. And, um, and so it just gave me something to work at. These, these diamond shapes are also very common there. So if you have something in your culture that's kind of exciting to you that you can incorporate and make your own, that's what I was doing here. And then I have one more. This time I decided to, instead of doing uh, an oval shape, I thought, let me try putting a rectangle inside the rectangle and see what happens there. So this time I started with a red rectangle. It's kind of like a platter. And then I went inside again with the transparent green, so red to green. And then I moved into oranges. And a lot of it is like just seeing circular shapes and then just placing things on top and not filling in the whole thing so I can go from area to area and work on patterns. And again, I was looking at the new Grange and just getting inspirations for marks and, and working intuitively. And also trying not to make it static because it's a rectangle within a rectangle. How can I keep movement in it? So that's why I did some of these things around the outside and then left it at the upper left. So that is my work that I have to show you today. And um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed seeing it and I uh, want to thank the callback for letting me use their gallery today and my videographer here who's helping me out, Barbara, and also to, to Mass Art. And I hope I see some of you um, 
for the tour, but if not, thanks for showing up today.